Welcome to Hindustan Times podcast and joining us for the podcast today is Lieutenant General Syed Atta Hasnain, a retired general of the Indian Army. His last assignment in service was as the military secretary of the Indian Army. But more importantly, he before that, he commanded the Indian Army's 15 corps in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Let me drive straight in and start with uh, your pet subject, which is Kashmir, where you've served for decades. Um, the revocation of Article 370 today, uh, you know, um, several years on, uh, now, terrorism in the valley has reduced considerably. There are, of course, targeted killings and that continues to happen. But terrorism uh, in the traditional sense of the word that we understood it, the infiltration from across the border, that seems to have considerably gone down. Why do you think that has happened, if that is the case? And, and with the present state of Pakistan, and maybe you can break that up into two answers, uh, perhaps, uh, what's going to happen? What's, what's going to be the impact of whatever Pakistan is going through right now? Uh, the social and the and the economic upheaval that that country is going through. How do you think that is going to impact what the situation in the valley is? Thank you, first of all. Thank you, Aditi. Thank you for having me on your program. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. As to Kashmir, yes, 2019, 5th of August, actually I was surprised. I did not expect such a bold decision to be taken. It was really bold. Um, it upset a lot of people in, in the valley and uh, perhaps this whole concept of um, a proxy war which Pakistan had been following for a long time, it even upset Pakistan's whole strategy. The issue was that with the focus now, uh, the government of India concentrated on Kashmir on the various sub aspects of terrorism there. For example, the networks. Without networks, terrorism cannot thrive financial networks, right. you have drugs and you have overground workers and even media. So all this got not targeted to that extent, but neutralized to a great extent with the sense that Pakistan could not perhaps exploit it to that extent. Legally, no one could challenge this. This was constitutionally done in the, in, in the Indian parliament. And, and therefore, uh, Kashmir just became an integral part of India, which has always been an integral part of India. The stamp, the legal stamp, just got added to it. The question was, it's not so easy for human beings to just transform their understanding, their sentiments and emotions overnight. So if someone thinks that every Kashmiri became a hardcore Indian, Indian. the next day, uh, I wouldn't agree with that. It was a hard grind for the government of India, for the Indian army, uh, for various security forces. They put, all got their act together. And uh, an all of government approach, which was what was wanting for all these years, an all of government approach was brought into it. I think it's this all of government approach which made a huge difference. It's not that we have succeeded 100%. We have suffered this problem for many, many years, and it's not likely that overnight this is going to change. This is going to be a generational change, perhaps, that will take, over, uh, take, take its own time. But we have marginalized terrorism to a very great extent. And I think the state is now ready for a political transformation, uh, an election in the offing, and perhaps a return to statehood. All that will ensure further uh, cementing of the integration of Jammu and Kashmir with India. As to the second part of your question, Pakistan. Yes, Pakistan has been weakened hugely. First of all, I think the perception should be clear that uh, the message has gone home to Pakistan very clearly that it's active interference in Jammu and Kashmir. The moment it crosses the, you know, the, the, the fence in terms of going overboard, a response from India will always come. It happened with the surgical strikes. It happened with Balakot. Mm -hmm. And it can happen again if something big happens in Kashmir. This has been very clearly brought home. So the level of interference, active involvement from Pakistan has marginally reduced. Pakistan itself does not have the capability today, economically. Socially, I think if you are seeing, if you are looking at social media, in fact, particularly, and we are looking at even Pakistan television, there are uh, lots of voices which are in support of India's Prime Minister, saying that, uh, see the kind of work which Look, is happening. Including your opposition, the most popular opposition leader, Indeed. Imran Khan. Absol right? Absolutely. That's, you see, they are all talking about 
the development indices, the social uh, factor, economics and things like that. No longer are you looking at ideological aspects or no longer at the military aspects and things like that. Those things don't matter when nations have to grow. Hmm. So I think this realization is coming home to Pakistan, but it's, it's just too early to say anything. I think we will have to play it by the ear. A lot will depend through this year. Uh, if elections happen in Pakistan, Imran Khan is popular. There's no doubt about it. If he comes to power, what is his uh, relationship going to be with the army? Yes, yesterday and today, I think he has just made some statements to say that uh, uh, General Bajwa uh, was the real villain of the peace because he was the one not wanting to actually pressurize India. So, uh, we was, we was, it's, it's a very interesting situation which is developing at the moment. But at the present, in this summer, the coming summer, I think infiltration is going to remain at a low. Pakistan will try to continue building up some kind of networks and maintaining them and continue the proxy war. Otherwise, 25 years, 30 years of investment by Pakistan is going to go waste. Or oh, Pakistan or Pakistan army, you mean? Oh, well, I suppose it's the Pakistan deep state. Right. The establishment. Hmm. The deep state consists of uh, the army, uh, retired veterans, the ISI, and lots of people in the business community. Okay. You'll be surprised. And even in the legal community, I mean, there are lots of domains which make up Pakistan's deep state, which is, a, as we understand, a government within a government. All right. You talked about, uh, uh, you know, I, Pakistan and uh, you talked about if elections happen and there's a big if there right now. Uh, uh, that, of course, is one part of the thing, but a kind of resentment brewing in several provinces of Pakistan. Um, uh, you know, there is Balochistan, there is, and the calls for uh, separation from the Pakistani state. All of that, there, I mean, there, there, are, there are movements that are calling, uh, you know, in Pakistan uh, occupied Kashmir where people are wanting to sort of uh, reunite with India, so Ab to speak. Absolutely. Those kind of voices, you, you think there's any cred credence or any numbers in those kind of voices? What's happening on that front? Because that sort of, uh, and there are many who already started talking about the disintegration of Pakistan as we know it. Well, uh, Pakistan somehow has a knack of it, a technique by which it survives. It's undergone uh, these kind of threats many times before. Of course, we can recall 1971 when the threat actually manifested and, and there was a separation, a division of Pakistan. But today, yes, Pakistan still remains a very unnatural kind of a state. Um, you know, com joined together, combined ideologically by Islam, the power of Islam. But that's not strong enough. What people have to realize is that na the power of pan-nationalism is perhaps stronger than ideological Islamism. And uh, this is coming to the fore in Pakistan to a great extent. Although I do feel that Pakistan may just about pull through. But it's got all kinds of challenges, particularly on the socio-economic side and on the social side, particularly the issue of ideology today. Because you're seeing the kind of blasphemy laws they have, the kind of uh, uh, actions that they take against their own minorities. There are no minorities left in Pakistan yeah, for all the, over, for, yeah. uh, at the moment. And uh, then uh, 23 times they've been to the IMF to take uh, loans from them. So how long is this going to survive? How long is it going to carry on? I think today's government, the next government, whichever comes to power, will have to realize that the world is focused on looking in, at Pakistan. And um, even the Islamic world, the OIC... Yeah, yeah, the, of, they've, Saudi, etc. have correct. totally they, they, abandoned they, them in their... Yeah. In fact, three months ago, we heard there's a $22 billion loan coming from the UAE and Saudi, but that's Nothing disappeared. Is, Nothing right, has come right. at all. So Pakistan has to do some inward soul searching to find as a state how exactly are they going to survive and as far as competition with india is concerned i think that's a that's a far call at the moment that's a far call at the moment in fact as you pointed out the the for for the last 20 30 years they've survived ba basically on this call for Kashmir, exactly. this, and and even now, the, you know, their foreign minister doesn't give up. He goes and raises Kashmir at various global forums. Uh, clearly, that introspection has not happened, which you and I are talking about. Exactly, and, and I'm surprised that Bilawal Bhutto, of all people, actually does it, because his family has suffered at the hands of the army, uh, and he's one person who should be looking for peace with India. 
And peace is not going to come by going and making these awkward speeches in the United Nations and other third, third uh, um, uh, countries uh, uh, elsewhere. What they should be looking for is an end to this kind of proxy terrorism which they have been carrying out all these years. Let India realize that there is a virtual certification from the government of Pakistan that they will not interfere, they will not carry out proxy activities in India. And you will say, see automatically there will be an outreach from India. It's happened in the past mm -hmm. and it will happen in the future. What do you make of, uh, since we are on Pakistan, the, the TTP terrorism, the Frankenstein monster that has come to bite them in their backside, the, uh, 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 a monster that they gave birth to, they nurtured, and now it's sort of... But, the, that, but it's a double-edged sword for India, isn't that, that's it? A because very, very interesting. It's a double-edged sword for India, is it? Because, yes, it's a, it's a monster that's come back to bite them, but also India is at risk because of this rising terrorism, the TTP growth. Yes. The emergence and the growth of the TTP is not very... Uh, suitable for, an, for, for for India as far as absolutely. terrorism are, is concerned because the leakages are there. Your assessment is absolutely 100% correct. Um, the TTP is, doesn't, is not targeting Pakistan alone. It's got ambitions beyond. But we are at the moment experiencing in the world the lowest end of global terror. This is uh, not something which is going to remain like that. In the near future, I can anticipate as a strategic analyst that there will be a return of global terror. And if there is any place from where this will commence once again, it is Afghanistan, Pakistan, so let's call it the AFPAC region. And uh, the, the prime organizations, terrorist organizations, which uh, will probably be the core center of this, are the ISIS Khorasan and uh, the TTP. Now, you've seen the activation, activity of the TTP, how it's been moving inside Pakistan from Afghanistan border to Karachi, and as I don't think it's very long before it enters into Lahore and areas like that. Once that happens, you're going to find a return to the famous Zarbe Azb type of operation which Pakistan army carried out from 2014 to 2018. They're going to get committed to do that once again. It all started, in fact, the real activation of counter-terrorism in Pakistan really started after this very famous army public school attack mm. in 2015, 16th yeah. of December 2015. So we are looking at that kind of a uh, emergence of that kind of a situation and if there's any organization which is likely to do it it is the TTP hmm. the Lashkar e Taiba the Jaish e Muhammad which are the Punjab based uh, India focus groups uh, are the so called friendly terrorist groups as they <laughs> call it in Pakistan okay uh, I don't think they are going to sort of join the TTP or join them in any way but you never know because um, they are getting ambitious they are looking at vacant spaces in Afghanistan and you are finding the, there is presence of Jaish, there is presence of uh, Lashkar e Taiba in all these areas in, in Afghanistan these, uh, at the moment. So who knows, in the future you may find even these organizations which are hugely Islamist uh, joining in into the TTP effort. How should India be ready for this, for this uh, emerging threat? Absolutely, uh, that, that's, that's an excellent question. It's not necessary that it's going to be Jammu and Kashmir alone. Yes. Now we are finding this expansion of uh, terrorism, the potential of terrorism into Punjab, and particularly the Punjab Jammu and Kashmir border, this area of Kathua, etc. I think this Punjab and Jammu and Kashmir should be seen as a continuum, first of all. No longer should we look at it in isolation. Uh, this is the area where it's likely to manifest once again. And I think we should not disturb our counter terrorism grid which is very well established at the moment. Sure. Pakistan, in Punjab, it needs to be, of course, strengthened, strengthened. But in Kashmir, it is very well established. There are proposals we are hearing of uh, diluting the Russian rifles from the counter-terrorism grid because there is an emerging threat in the northern borders from China. Uh, and that stands to reason. But um, I, as a, as a counter-argument, I would say that I think we should be a little more patient. We should wait because... This manifestation of what's happening in Pakistan and the TTP's activities, etc., may come towards India faster than we can imagine.